just a menace. Menace is sobriety. Just a menace. Just, just a menace. Just a menace. Menace. I think you have to be in a mental state, a, a proper mental state where you're like, uh, you'll know when you're ready to make that choice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I think you've got to be ready. Yeah. Mentally, you have to be <coughs> made that decision that this is it. Yeah. You know, as you say, there's always going to be excuses, reasons, yeah. why you rationalise yourself, why. But you've got to reach a point where you go, there's always going to be those things. And now I'm mentally ready to do something about it. And that's the point you've got to. How do people know if they've got a problem? I think so many people are in denial, you know. Even when we did that video that we put out, and, we, and I put it into a clip, and you put it into a clip, was like, even if you use twice a week, you've still got an addiction. I'm still getting people on my TikTok going, no, yeah. no, 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 I only use twice a week, I don't have an addiction. People are in denial. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Menace to Sobriety, uh, my podcast. My name is Daniel O'Reilly. If you don't know me, I'm a comedian called Dapper Laughs Online. Uh, I spent the majority of my life uh, laughing and joking about uh, getting on it, drinking, having a laugh, uh, being a bit of a lad's lad. Recently, I've gone through a bit of a wake-up call, uh, started my journey of sobriety, uh, and I'm learning all things uh, in the manner of addiction, mental health, positivity, well-being, and just sorting my life out. I've had loads of interesting guests, uh, and some of them are coming back for uh, for a second chat. And one of them is my good friend and now an even bigger social media sensation and viral influencer, hypnotist, Elliot Ward. Hey Hello. Dude. Hey, dude, Dad. Good to be back. You're back. I am back. Mate. I'm back. Yes, definitely. So for those of <clears throat> for those of, for the people out there that have just stumbled across this episode and uh, don't understand the backstory, we had a chat, first of all, but we were so excited to meet each other. We missed loads of stuff out. Um, so we wanted to do another one with a bit of structure. We've made some notes of stuff to cover. Yeah, notes. But more importantly, you promised to come back. Why? Because it's 100 days. And hold on, 100... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, wait, for it, wait for it. Hold tight. A little bit of a drum roll. It's not a bag of gear, is it? No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> whoa! My girls are going to love yes, this. Yes, I thought you and the girls. Whoa, look at that. Menace to... Sub get a close-up on this one. Menace... <laughs> Menace to sobriety. On that, for those of you that are listening, these are a load of cupcakes. One of them says, Menace to Sobriety. Another one says, Off the Packet. Thank you. <laughs> one of them, my missus is not going to like and that one. Name? Yeah, one of them says, 100 days. Ooh. Thank you. And the other one, yeah. That a laughs. That a laughs. My kid, I'll take the packet top off that one, but my kids are going to love this. And They're um, all different. They're different flavours. It's written on the sides. Oh, look jam. At that jam. Nutella. What's that? Lotus. Who made yeah, these? Biscotti. Who made them? Um, we had a lady handmade them. Thank you. Laura Brooke, yep. Lottie's Cakes. Tell her I'm 10% commission if any of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she loves me, does she? All right, I'll do a yep. proper shout out for you. Uh, Lolly Bakes by Lauren Brooke. Thank you very much for the cakes. You are a rascal. And thank you, Elliot, mate. 100 My days. 100 days, man. 100 days. Yeah, I feel How's good. it feel? Uh, if it's, yeah, it feels good, man. It feels, I, I, for some reason, I had 100 days in my head from the start. Like when I when it, when it I was looking at my app, um, Sober. Oh, I can't remember what the app's called now. Let me have a look. When I was looking at my app, I Am Sober, uh, I can remember those first few days where I was still like hung over and drunk from the big blowout that I'd had and everything. Um, my last big hurrah. As, big hurrah. Which we are talking Let's about. Let's get it all out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow I start. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I was an emotional wreck because of everything that I'd been through at that time. I had a big bust up and everything like that. But um, I remember looking at day one, day two, day three and thinking, fucking hell, this is this going. And I was like, but that's going to be day 100 one day. So now that I'm here, I, f I, I, f I feel a hundred times better than I thought I was going to on day one. I feel so good. Tell me something. What, what do you think out of that 100 days, what's the most beneficial thing that you feel now? What have you gained the most from it? Uh, presence. Yeah? Presence. Being there for but, everyone. But, well, not just for everyone. You don't mean cupcake presents. No, <laughs> no, not <laughs> presents, presents. I mean, they're great. <laughs> they're great. But um, no, presents, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like enjoying um, enjoying the here and now. So, for instance, my baseline, like the, the sort of where I operated from day to day, and like I always say on this podcast and to other people, I wasn't drinking uh, all week and I wasn't using drugs all week. I was occasionally using yeah. drugs every now and then, but I was getting drunk twice a week, um, something like that. But once I started, I couldn't stop and the, and, and the hangovers were horrific. My baseline was always either, I was either drunk or I was hungover. And after two or three days of not feeling hungover, I still had that 
that anxiety. So I never felt normal. So to to be waking up and going from day to day to day to day to day to not just feeling normal, but feeling better and better. I just feel present and happy to see me and my missus are getting on better than ever. Yeah, that's good. Do you know what I mean? I mean, she's putting it on me now. And the kids. And the kids are feeling, the kids are great. The kids are absolutely fantastic. The kids are so happy. Happy, 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 mate. You know, well, the kids are always happy, but I mean, I'm noticing the happiness yeah. now. Because you know you're there. I mean? Yeah. You're there fully, completely. Yeah. Uh, it's a word I use. Call it alive. You're alive. I feel alive. Yeah, I feel alive. alive. But you missed that bit there. I said, my missus is putting it on me. Yeah, like, well, do you know what I mean? I knew what you meant. Yeah, like she skirted on it to be polite. But, um, <laughs> but, the, but that, and I don't just mean from a lucky position. Well, that's good. Which is good. But I mean, like, she's, she's, and, and. You know, she's very vocal about, I'm happy, you look well. You know, she tells me all the time. You're she's looking... reaffirming it to yeah, you. Yeah, you're looking well. You're looking, I'm like, AZ, I'm not a piece of fucking she's meat. She's supporting you, though. Yeah, she really is. She's happy. She's happier. She's got a big job interview today. So tonight, um, we're going to go for a meal and celebrate her interview and celebrate my 100 day. So What's her first name? Shelly. Shelly, good luck with your interview. Yes, Shelly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if she gets it, then she gets something else later as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming back. Um, and yeah, we've got lots to talk about. Um, where should we start, my friend? Let's, let's talk about, first of all, the reaction. Yeah. So okay. uh, we, we put a couple of clips out of this on TikTok. I mean, you're, 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 you're used to a few hundred thousand views on or whatever on your TikToks yeah, anyway. Yeah. I mean, I mean, one of them's had 2.6 million views. Wow. Another one's just under a million. I think it hit a million today. Another one's under just under a million. Wow. 300,000, 100,000. I mean, the response has been absolutely phenomenal because I think... People aren't used to having two real people yeah. who've had two life experiences putting it all out there and being straight, no nonsense, straight down the line, no bullshit. Yeah. And they relate to it and people are relating to it. So I think it's, it's been really well received. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we, it, it is different as uh, I think maybe because we're quite lads, lads or yeah. working class or, or yeah. however you want to put it. But also I think that, you know, we're saying stuff that, to, uh, uh, well, you've always been saying stuff on your TikTok that um, is not not normally what, let's say the I don't know how to put it, like the, the medical industry or the industry yeah, or like psychology. They don't speak it's about taboo. the real like the real things. Exactly. Yeah, the real things. And I think that we're at an age now. Uh, I want to ask you how old you are, mate. But I'm like nearly forty. I'm like thirty eight. Um, Me too. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Good. There you go. And um, but I think we're at an age now where our generation are coming to the point, and this is what I was thinking about the other day. We're coming to a point where, you know, the party has been fantastic. But like your late thirties, early forties, you're like fucking hell. I'm getting tired. I've got kids. I really want. I've only got a few more years. That's what I feel like. I've only got ten more years to make a real impact on fina financially sorting out the rest of my life. So I think a lot of people are connecting with it. I, think, I think one of the things that I've heard a lot when people making comments, we're very a uh, common theme that's been repeated is, it feels like you're talking to me. It yeah. feels like you're talking to me. That's me. It feels like you're talking to me. Yeah. And I think that's what resonates with a lot of people, mm. that we are talking to them because we are them. Yeah. Yeah, let's get into it, mate. What did you want to talk about this week? So, Well, do the... you know what? I wanted to start off with something because I really wanted to put something in perspective for, for you, yeah. for people using, because a lot of people are going, you know, I watched that, I listened to you and Dapper, and, and, and it really helped me. And, and that's a wonderful thing to be able to give back, yeah. right? Um, and I'm not evangelical. I'm not that sort of person that goes, oh, you've got to give up the bag, you've got to give up the packet. I'm like, listen, if you want to do it, fucking go ahead, right? But if you've reached a point in your life where you decide you want to make a change and you want to listen to something that's going to support you, encourage you, and help you, mm. then listen, right? Yeah. So the same that I wanted to show you today. Oh, what's this? He keeps, he keeps on pulling stuff out. He's got like a little sack down the bottom there. Well, look, I wanted to put Oh, no, they look there. like packets. They actually do. They're big uh, packets. Yeah. Oh. Prepared packets, like back in the day. Oh, my right? God, I'm going to have to do a line live on the podcast. I'm back, baby. No, I'm joking. But what I wanted to show you is this, right? Now, this is scary, I, looked at, I looked at the police reports, right, for 2014. Wow, look at and this. Of all, the, of all the things that are, of all the uh, seizures. Yeah. And let me tell you that 12 to 40% is what the average test on gear that's been seized comes out at. That means that 60% of it, as I mentioned before, isn't gear, isn't the gear itself. It's wow. additives, it's other things that we spoke 60%. about. 60%? 60%, right? So if you've got 40% proof, that means the other 60% is made up of other things. Now, mm. just to make this clear, no real gear was made in the process of this program. Yeah. So what I did is I weighed out an ounce, right? Uh, God, hold oh. on a second. Let me just, I've got to record this. I weighed out an ounce, right? 
and I split it between <laughs> chocolate protein powder, so you can get big later, and white flour, right? And I weighed out an ounce at 60% and 40%. So you can really see what you're putting up your nose. And what I wanted to do was Oh, this, my God. Right? Yeah. When you do that, that's what you're using. Obviously, the additives aren't brown, obviously, but I need to make a distinction. That's what you're using. That is what you're mm. putting up your nose. And people think... Oh yeah, oh, it's not. I wouldn't do it off a toilet system, and I wouldn't do this. But look what you put up your nose. You Shit. put it up without thinking about. Sixty percent of what you're putting up isn't even gear. It's other stuff, other shit. And you know, think about when they make cocaine. I didn't mention this last time. When they burn it in the tires and things, they use tires. That tire contains carcinogenics that causes cancer. But let's look at that. Yes, That's an ounce, right? Yeah, and uh, and, the, and the and the other, even though you've used the brown stuff there to symbolise what you're mixing, yeah. and that would have been white, so you wouldn't be able to tell. But that's exactly majority; that. it's majority brown. Now, first of all, very dab hand with a card there, my friend. Well, plenty of practice, my friend. <laughs> plenty of practice. Look at that. But for those of you that that's about one of my one of my old ones. Oh, really? So you Fuck. get an idea. This geezer used to do slugs, mate. No, that's what I used to do. Like people used to weigh it out. They go, "Do you want a line? Do you want a line?" And they do that, and I go. The fuck do you want me to do with that? Yeah, Jesus Christ! Um, you want to well, party with me? You want to party hard? Yeah, seriously. But um, for those of you that are listening that can't see what he's done here, is he's he's popped it all out in powder form, so you can really see. Just to emphasize, emphasize that you don't really know. And and this is something I had. I was talking to Kirk the other day, Kirk Norcross, a uh, big friend of um, of Menace to Sobriety, and he said to me, not just you don't know what's in it, but he said to me, he goes to me, do you know what the crazy thing is? When I used to go around someone's house, and if I was eating, like if there was a kid's party or something like that and someone put a sandwich ah. on, uh, a sandwich on the side yeah. of the thing and it wasn't on a plate he's like OCD a little bit yeah. and he's like I won't eat that or if he goes into a toilet and the toilet the toilet was dirty he'd go and he'd be like I'm not pissing or shitting in here but he'd sniff a line off that top or he'd or like where the spoon's toilets he'd rack one up on the thing like Jesus I've I got mean, to tell you a funny who story. knows what's happening now I've done some wonky stuff in them toilets yeah, yeah go I'll on tell you, I went to the O2 one year with a mate of mine to see a concert I can't remember who it was and uh, I said let's go, let's go and do one let's go and do one we go to the toilet Okay, we do it on the top of the toilet hit toilet lid, right? Because there's no system there in the OT. And we put the toilet seat down, but they're oval. They're oval like that. They're mm. not as flat. They're oval. And he's like, oh, what the fuck are we going to do now? I was like, don't worry about it. And I did this straight line right over the top of the oval toilet seat. I said, where there's a will, there's a way. Wow. But we are, it seems like we're glorifying drug use, but it is glorious at the time, but we're not glorifying Listen, it. Listen, you you, you've got these experiences so you can help other people yeah. in the future so that people can resonate and go, I fucking did that, I fucking did that. Yeah. Well, if they stopped... I can stop. If they did it, yeah, I yeah, can you're do right. it too. You're right. That's the way yeah. I express it. It's not about glorifying. It's about, listen, they don't want me to, I don't want me to sit there going being, you know, I'm really boring and we should talk about drugs and we shouldn't talk about this and we shouldn't do yeah. that. We shouldn't do it. Like, listen, why are you going to do that? No one's going to mm. listen and no one's going to take note. If they want some help, they have to understand that that person mm. understands them because that person has been them. Yeah. That's that's really good, and I think that's probably why people, are, like you said, are relating to the clips and relating to us. And I think that, you know, I put a post up this morning saying, I think you saw it, you commented on it actually, yeah, saying uh, I'm 100 days today. Yeah. And um, I actually went on to, um, like for instance, a lot of this stuff that we're talking about is going to, I know it's even just putting that out, it may be a bit triggering for people. So, some, you know, a lot of the comments on our podcast um, on the YouTube were like, Make, uh, watching this is making me want to get on it. I get that a yeah, lot. Yeah. I get that a lot. Like, do you know what I mean? And like all people saying, fuck, I'd love to have a session with Dapper or whatever, right? But um, someone, and, and I, I appreciate that this can be triggering. And someone put a tweet up that upset me this morning. I'm okay. getting a few, getting a few things. And he just said, like, um, you know, you've 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 spent your life like sort of monetizing and being the lad and sesh culture and everything like that. And now you're getting old and you know you've sold out and you know you're going on the mental health thing. Why do you think people are? are... I, th I think there are there are a couple of reasons. I think firstly, it's like if you have crabs in a bucket, right? And one crab tries to escape. You know what the crabs do? The crab grabs the leg of the other crab and it rips the leg off trying to stop it preventing it getting away and i think what a lot of people are is they haven't stopped and they don't feel comfortable being left behind that's one part of it the second part is they think like oh you're ramming it down my throat well don't listen if it's not for you that's that's yeah. the second thing i say and then the last thing i would say is look people want to understand that as i said we've been there done it right and it's not ram it down someone's throat. We're not evangelical. We're not saying, oh, man, you've got to do this, right? We're saying, listen, we've lived these experiences. We've learned from these experiences. We're just like you. And we found a solution and a way out. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, and maybe that's why, maybe that's why um, 
I'm not hearing from certain groups of people or that people happens. anymore. And that happens, definitely. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, people, some people say, you know, oh, I don't think I can stop. I don't think I can stop. I don't think I can stop. Uh, and I was reminded of something yesterday, uh, and I sent a message saying this. Um, you know that time when you go to your dealer and they're not around for like two or three hours and you're like, the first half an hour, you're like, oh, you're like, you know, you're clucking. You're yeah, like yeah, clucky yeah, chicken, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, clucky clucking. chicken. You yeah. want it, right? And then they say, oh, sorry, I won't be around all day. And then about an hour later, you're like, acceptance like okay and you just get on with the day it just shows you that mm. when you have an acceptance in your mind you're able not to mm. use if you can do that one day you can multiply that day multiply that day multiply that day and before you know it you are a year two years three years mm. four years without using you have that mm. ability inside of you yeah so for me personally it was i i i always like for instance it's such a weird thing that that was happening with me and i think that there's definitely millions of people out there that that are going through the same thing like i didn't even think about i never would even think about the packet like if i was sober ever i wouldn't even consider it um and sometimes i'd go out and have a drink and it wouldn't even cross my mind but sometimes i'd have a drink and it was the only thing on my mind and like people around me would be like like i'll be like come on are we getting it we're getting one in tonight it's like it, it, and that's where the sesh gremlin comes from it's like it was there and i always knew to myself that in order for me to because the fallout from from using for me the come downs and the fallout were getting worse and worse and i was mentally i could feel myself going insane the, the days after i was really losing the plot and um the uh the, the thing for me was like, right, I understand what I've got to do now. I've got to give up drinking. And it was so hard for me because I associate drinking with socialising with my friends and a massive part of my lifestyle. And I watched that clip back that we we done, that we cut and to put, put out a clip where you said, uh, with my hands to cover yeah, yeah, my yeah, fingers. Yeah. And I've been thinking about that analogy so much that that's what's happened to me in these hundred days. Because... You know, I, I I was thinking to myself, Friday's coming, Saturday's coming, da da da. And at first, I was thinking, oh well, I'm not going to go to the pub, I'm not going to sit there, and I'm not going to drink, I'm not going to see my pals, I'm not going to do that. And as the time has gone on, I thought about that less and less and less. And yeah. now my weekends are coming, and I'm like, I'm so happy that I'm sober. Okay. I'm so I, I couldn't think, and I'm not just saying this. I couldn't think of anything worse than sitting in a fucking room chatting absolute cod shit to a load of fucking middle-aged men like myself and while my kids are sat at home wondering where their dad, dad and every is. monday morning when you wake up you go yes yeah mate yes yes yeah i do it's like, it's like there's a devil and an angel on your shoulder right? and the angel's going no we don't do it and the devil's going yeah just have some no don't do it but just have some yeah that, that sesh gram. and yeah. when you feed it that devil becomes a bit bigger and a bit bigger and a bit stronger until it consumes you mm. but once you stop using that devil becomes smaller and smaller and smaller it still exists it will always be there right but it just becomes so small, you don't even hear what it says anymore. Mm. And that's really where you've got to. And as you said, that finger and thumb, you've realised that this is your new pattern. This is your new habit. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is for yeah. you. This yeah. is life. And I feel sexy. But what I'm going to do, just quickly, is I'm just going to move this now. Because it is making me want to fucking slip a line off someone's bangers. And I think they're going to be yours, John. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm only joking, but I just want to move that out of there in case someone someone comes in halfway through the episode <laughs> and actually thinks we're having a session. Uh, do, do you know it's funny? <laughs> I, I was a bit thinking to myself on the way up. Get, I could have got Buddha. Thank you. Came up by a train. And I thought to myself, what am I carrying? I wonder if I get stopped by the police. What they say? No, no, it's all right. I'm going on Daffer's podcast. Yeah. That's sobriety. It's not real. It's not real. Yeah, yeah. Because they can do you for carrying gear that's not even real. I don't know what the word is, but there is a... There oh, is like, a, as if you're selling it yeah, as fake gear. as if you're yeah. selling it. I'd be like, no, no, it's protein powder and flour. Yeah. yeah. Um, right, yeah, so I've got a couple of things here. So um, one thing that I thought... I'm going to just jump ahead a few of them because this one really this one really got to me. Um, and before I go into it, I've got, a, I've got a friend of mine that um, since I've been doing this, a few friends of mine have, have been like, Dan, I, I've, I've definitely got a fucking problem. I've really got a problem. And, you know, I've been hiding how much I'm using. I've been hiding yeah. how much I'm drinking and that and look, seeing what you're doing. But, and one of them was like, oh, but I've got this coming up and I've got this coming up and I've got this coming up. And I, and I said, because I'd done the same thing last year. I'd, I'd done my six months or however long it was. Maybe it was a bit less than that. And then I had Christmas and I and also had my stag do. And I was like, I'm just, do you know what? Fuck it. I'm just not going to do the stag do sober. I'm just not. I'm going, I'm going to go Marbella and I'm going to go mental. Um, it just wasn't in my makeup at the time. Um, <clears throat> and they were, they kept those things kept coming. Um, but unfortunately, as they kept coming, the fallout from the back of it was getting worse and I felt like I was skating closer and closer to the line of everything fucking going wrong. So I knew it was coming, but my, 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 my point is anyway, I finally get there. My point is, is that I think 
you have to be in a mental state, a, a proper mental state where you're like, uh, you'll know when you're ready to make that choice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I think you've got to be ready. Yeah. Mentally, you have to be <coughs> made that decision that this is it. Yeah. Now, as you say, there's always going to be excuses, reasons, yeah. why you rationalise yourself, why, oh, my birthday, it's Christmas, it's New Year's Eve, I'm going to a stag party, I'm doing this. Yeah. There's always a reason to put it off, and that's fine. But you've got to reach a point where you go, there's always going to be those things, and now I'm mentally ready to do something about it. And that's the point you got to. Yeah, and I've, for the first time ever, I've said a lot of no's in the last 100 days. I've said a lot of no's. And not only have I... The first no's were hard. Oh, you come into Thingy's birthday. And, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I will actually. I will actually. And then coming closer to it, the anxiety will come in. And then I'll go, I'm not, I'm not going to come, lads, like on a day. And then... And then our Christmas party, are you coming to this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, or blah, blah, blah. And now the no's are like, no, man. Like, well, no. That, that's I, interesting because, you know, you can say no <coughs> and you can really mean no. You can mm. say no and be like, well, I'm not <coughs> sure. Yeah. Or you can say no and mean yes. And I think what people are understanding mm. by your communication is you're saying no yeah. and I mean no yeah, as yeah. opposed to no, eh, try and sway me. Yeah. No, well, yeah, I do want to come. No, yeah, like someone said to me the other day, my good pal Lee said to me, do you want to come to the casino? It's my uncle's birthday. We're all going out and I, and I just text back straight away. I said, no, nah, that ain't for me, man. Those nights like ain't for me no more because I couldn't think of anything worse than going up there and not drinking Unfortunately, like I'm just saying about the casino, yeah. you know what I mean? Because I used to associate the casino yep. with drinking, getting trigger pissed. For you. Yeah, it was a big trigger for me. And <clears throat> and quite frankly, I don't want to be around a lot of pissed up people sober. But if it was like a meal or and I could get or if it was like a party that I could leave at like yep. seven thirty eight and fine. That that's exactly what I do. Because like, <laughs> you know, I have a group of, of friends and we go out to eat every couple of months, for example, the boys is like 15, 20 of us. And some of them still do it, right? I'll go, I'll go for a curry, whatever we're going to go for. And like, we'll meet 7.30, 9 o'clock, I'm chipping off. I'm like, I've had enough, mate. You want to go get drunk, you want to go and get on the packet, that's fine, but that's not for me anymore. If that's what you want to do, eat your heart out, but not me. Yeah. I'm just, I was just reading the notes there. So you put on here the, the last hurrah. The last hurrah. Like everybody says, like the last hurrah. This is my last hurrah. Right? I'm going to go out with a bang. I'm going to get on a full session and tomorrow I'm going to stop. And that's fine. When you've reached that point, you've made that decision. But not when next week, oh, no, 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 that wasn't the last hurrah. I'm going to have another last hurrah, another last hurrah. <laughs> yeah. Right? That doesn't work. Yeah. You can have a last hurrah if you are 100% motivated, <coughs> dedicated and committed to stopping. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> just off script a little bit because we've got a little thing here that we're we're chatting about. But just off script, uh, this is this is something that I wanted to ask everyone really, and I keep forgetting to ask: How do people know if they've got a problem? I think so many people are in denial. You know, people are in denial because even when we did that video that we put out, and we and I put it into a clip, and you put it into a clip was like. Even if you use twice a week, you've still got an addiction. I'm still getting people on my TikTok going, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I only use twice a week. I don't have an addiction. People are in denial. And I think when you reach a point where it's affecting your family, it's affecting your occupation, you're not waking up on a Saturday morning feeling fresh and want to do something with your family. You're not present like you are now with your mm. family. I think you have to take a hard look at yourself and go, I've got an issue. Yeah. I need to do something about it. And I think... Some people let that go on for a long, long, we all do, let it go on for a long, long time before they finally make the decision. And sometimes they don't know how to get out of that. They don't know the route out. You know, they're looking for, they don't even look for the solution because they don't know. They feel like I can't do it. And if I can't succeed, why would I try? Mm. You know, nobody likes to fail. So, so it's, rather than fail, I won't even try. Yeah. I, I've been trying to work that out for myself. I've really been trying to work out, work out, you know, why it took me so long to realise that it wasn't right. And, well, I always knew it wasn't right. Do you know what I mean? I always knew that drinking and drinking... But it was a laugh, excess. right? That's the way you yeah, figured it, it was. A, it was a laugh and it was good, but I, 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 I keep on trying to rationalise. And I, I don't know if you notice on this podcast, I keep on saying to myself... Oh, you know, I only used once or twice, you know, I only used, you know, occasionally at the thing. It was more the drinking. And even when I drank, I, and I'm I still sort of like, oh, I'm scared. I don't want to look like a uh, like a big drug user and da, da, da. maybe it's because of the line of work that I'm in. But um, <clears throat> I think that the simplest way that I can describe it is probably like you said. Again, you said this kind of you kind of said this in the last podcast is if you wake up and you're like, Phew, I ain't doing that again. I should not do that again. And a couple of days later, you're like, I'm doing it again. Yep. Then you've got a problem. <laughs> yeah, because you're not... You, at that time, you have an emotional attachment. You're like, oh my God, what did I do that for? I'm a fucking idiot. 
And then two or three days later, you may remember the memory, but you don't have the attachment associated with it. And when you say, how do you know when you're ready? You know, you remind me of a client that came to see me not long ago, uh, a young guy, worked in a warehouse, mid-20s. He was only 500 pounds a week, right? And he was spending 500 pounds a week on the packet. Wow. He would work all night in a warehouse and he'd pick one up, do it while he was working all night long. He'd spend 500 pounds because he'd do a bit more. All of his wages, and he was living with his parents, would go on the packet. Now, if somebody's in that position, it took him a long time before he came to see me and I helped him stop. But if somebody's in that position, you would have thought, surely you would notice that you're going to work all week, working nights, right, to earn a wage to just stick up your nose at the end of the week. Mm. And you've got nothing to show for it. In fact, he owed money because he was ticking people. And of course, every dealer's going to go, yeah, you can, I'll tick you. Of course I'll tick you. Because I know you're going to come back to have to pay me. When you pay me, you're going to take another one. Yeah. Wow. So it is, it's, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. And I guess people, it's the habit, but people are latching on. No, this is me. This is what I do. And I enjoy this. And he probably thought them night shifts is like the only way I'm getting through these night shifts is with the packet. Yeah, exactly. Um, but imagine what his days were like. Until after. it becomes the packet is the only reason he's going to work. Oh, God. It's such a tricky, tricky thing. So wanting to stop, wanting to stop and preventing relapses. So. Oh, someone just someone messaged me that today, actually. So today I put, oh, it's 100 days. And, you know, I wanted to sort of thank my, oh, my missus. It's the job interview. Can I just? Yeah, of course. Hold on, Let's hold on. Go. Hold on. Ba babe, I'm live in the podcast, but I want to hear. We all want to hear. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can't talk, but we're live. We're recording. Come on. Do, you, do you want to wait till after? No, tell us. Yeah. No. Hello. Come on. <laughs> She won't. She'll be embarrassed. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'll give you. Um. I'll give you. I'll give you a call after, babe. So I just give me a therapist. Good number. Yeah. <laughs> Got me with a therapist. But um. Um. But you're laughing, so I think it's going to be good news. But I'll I'll call you after. Yeah. I'll text you. Okay. Bye. 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 Love you. Lo yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. Good. Positive. Positive. Good. Yeah. yeah. Let's be positive. Because if she gets a job, I get a blowy. So no, I'm joking. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Um, <clears throat> fingers crossed, though. Right. Um, relapse. Relapsing. Relapsing. I'm going to text her. Did just... someone message you? Yeah. So someone messaged me. No, I won't text her. I won't text her. I can... Look, this is the ADHD. It won't focus, let me just focus. do one thing. Um, someone texted me and said. Congratulations, congratulations on the 100 days. Mm -hmm. But ha like, it's great that you got clean and sober. It's great that you got clean and sober. Congratulations on the 100 days. And then underneath it said, now how are you going to stay clean and sober? Yeah, of course. And that made me think, it gave me a little, uh, I was yeah. like, well. You know what I say to them? It's very simple, Dan. Fuck them. Yeah. That's what I say. That's my answer to them. Uh, the one thing I'll talk about is, is recovery, right? Now, a lot of people are going to be against what I'm going to say. It's a bit... I don't know, not politically correct. People talk about, you know, I've, I've, I'm in recovery. I'm in recovery, uh, but I've relapsed. I've relapsed. Oh, I've relapsed. I've relapsed. It's like it's like a warm blanket. You haven't relapsed. You're fucked up. So now get back on and focus on what you're doing. Mm. You haven't relapsed. You're fucked up. People go, oh, I've relapsed. I, oh, I've relapsed. And it's all soft. What do you mean? You, you mean they're like, oh, I've, I've just relapsed yeah, for a bit. Yeah, I've just relapsed for a bit, and I, I'm going to get back to it. And and I, I've relapsed. It's like like a relapse is a, a soft word. It's, they're not hard on themselves. They're not strong on themselves. They're like, relapse is a cop-out word to saying, okay, I fucked up. We all fuck up. I fucked up many times in my life, and I'm sure you have, right? Mm -hmm. We've all fucked up. Accept it, because when you accept that you fucked up, you learn from it and you move mm. forward. When you say, oh, I've relapsed, I've relapsed. It's like, it's like yeah. the warm blanket's put around you, and it's all okay. No, it's not okay. You're fucked up, yeah. but you learn from it, and you get on again, and that's fine. That's, yeah, it's a tough attitude to have, but I get... Yeah, you've got to be tough sometimes. I get where you're coming from. I mean, my, my attitude towards it now is my life, right? So... I, I I wouldn't I, I just never would use the relapse um, word. I'd be like if I don't if I got on it or I drank, I'd be like I'm drinking again. Yeah. Listen, let me ask you a question, right? When you spar, listen, if you get knocked down, would you stay knocked down or would you get up? No, I'd get up, yeah. It's and exactly I, like, the same come, principle. Come, try and come back harder. Exactly. When right. You, so you, yeah. it's not relapse. You fucked up, get back up, get back on it and get back focused. Yeah, of course. Of course, definitely. And I think that yeah, you put yeah, every once you stop, you get uh, complacent, you think that you know, one night won't hurt and it'll take you back yeah, into the black hole. That's what happens, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, you know, I messed up on Friday, but I won't start Saturday. I'll start Monday. So, well, because I messed up Friday, I'm not starting to I'll Monday. I'll treat myself a bit I'll more. I'll do Saturday and Sunday. Like, yeah. I've got to tell you this, right? I had a DJ come and see me about five years ago 
and, and he came to see me. And of course, being a DJ, you know, he's surround, we're all surrounded by it, but he's more surrounded by it, right? Yeah. And he comes to see me and he says, look, L, look, I need to stop. And I helped him stop and we got through the process. And it was about August. Mm. And then January the 2nd, he phones me. And I said, I know what happened. He said, how do you know what happened? You're not a psychic. I said, I'm not a fucking psychic, but I'm, I'm simple. You know, I, I simply understand why you've done this, right? And uh, he said, how do you know? I said, listen, it was New Year's Eve. And I'll tell you what happened. On New Year's Eve, you were DJing and someone went, no, no, just do it New Year's Eve. You've been good all day. And if you stop at midnight, right, it won't count because you won't be doing it the next year. And he went, oh, that seems like a good idea. Now, once you start at nine o'clock at night, there's no fucking way you're stopping at midnight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he finds me January the 2nd, right? Mm. And I said, listen, I'm not working January the 10th because I like to take that period of time off to be with my kids and spend time with my kids. So my, my son's birthday is January the 10th. I go back to work January the 11th. I said, phone me January the 11th. He phones me January the 11th. I book him an appointment. I said, listen, an emergency appointment. I'll see you on the 11th. Come in and see me today. So this DJ, very, very big name DJ, does all the Ibiza circuits and everything. He comes to see me January the 11th. And I said, I'll tell you what happened. Not only did you fuck up on New Year's Eve, and not only did you phone me on January the 2nd, and you did it between then and there, but you knew you were coming back to see me until January the 11th. So you carried on. So you carried on. He went, how the fuck do you know that? I said, it's not rocket science. <laughs> yeah. I helped him stop. He stopped. He phones me up January the 2nd the following year. I went, you are fucking joking. Really? He's like, but, ew. And I was like, no, 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 but nothing, right? Okay, come back in January 11th. Come back and see me. He comes back to see me. I fixed him. I sorted him. He stopped using him. I said, do not fucking call me January the 2nd next year. He goes, but don't you want the business? I said, it's not about the business. It's about helping you stop and stay stopped. What I don't want to become is your crutch yeah. that you think, to I can stop all year, yeah. and then New Year's Eve, I can do it for a couple of days and go back and see Elwin, he's going to fix me. And you know what? I'm still in touch with this guy. He does all the circuits, I say, and we're five years on, and he's never gone back to it because of that. Well, because you said, don't use because, me. Because don't, don't, use... don't use a crutch. Don't fucking come back and see me if you do the same mistake. Yeah. Once you learn, have a mistake, okay, I help you. Once you learn from that mistake, you fix it and you move on. Yeah. You don't go back. Yeah. All right. Tough, man. Tough. But that's what, that's what, this ain't, this ain't like man be pan be fucking no. stuff, man. It's not like, it's not like going and sitting. I mean, I, I went and sat in front of my doctor before and, oh God, mate, I'm having so many flashbacks now of times where I was actually crying for help where I never even really re realized it. I sat in front of my doctor before crying and being upset and being like, I just feel like worthless. I'm a mess. And they were like, have you been drinking heavily? And, da -da -da. and I was like, yeah, but I, look, it's Listen, not they, that. They, 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 and, the problem is this. Sorry, Dan. The problem yeah. is this. They have the medical training but they've never had the experience. Yeah. There is a massive gap between them and yeah. they don't understand. And, and it all play to the GP and the medical fraternity, but they are on a scheduled time limit. And the only thing they can really do is write your prescription. It's as yeah. simple as that. What can they do? Yeah, I mean, he, he said to me, well, you know you shouldn't drink in excess. And I was like, well, what's the point of fucking drinking? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that might have been my... That exactly. Might, that, that's, a, that's a warning sign right there. But I mean, um, I guess what, what where I was going with it was that you know you you've got quite a strong attitude towards it which these people need to hear do you ever how do you encounter how, how do you deal with people lying to you okay. about about well, stuff it, you know it wasn't that long ago that i had a client come in to see me came to one of my clinics and the moment he walked in listen you know when someone's on it and i went to him have you done a line before you come in and he went no and i went listen if we're going to get on you can't be fucking lying to me you got to be completely honest and i'm straight i'm like this i'm like this with my yeah, clients yeah. i'm straight talking don't bullshit me you hear me for me to help you be honest yeah and then he says yeah oh, i did do one and then just before he leaves he said can i use your toilet i said yeah, of course you can and he comes down and i looked at him and went did you fucking just do a line in my toilet <laughs> he's like but it's just a case history session the first session we just get in to understand it before i come back and start the therapy I said, you went upstairs and did a line in my toilet when I just told you don't fucking come in here off your tits. <laughs> and I said to him, listen, when you come back next week and we start the therapy, if you come to my clinic and you have touched it, you will be out the door. Yeah, fair And enough. I have to be that way because that way they respect me. Mm, yeah. They know what they're getting and they know that... But also you didn't turn him away straight away because you're dealing with... Uh, of course with, I am. You're dealing with I it. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. I understand that. I've had somebody come and knock on my clinic door and then I've heard a... <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? I've opened the door and there is a woman lying on the floor, completely pissed at 10 o'clock in the morning. I couldn't even pick her up. She was so drunk. Fuck. Now, I understand that. And I said to her, listen, 
If you need me to make your appointment at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., I'll go out of my way for my clients. I'll bend over backwards. I'll work 24 hours. I'll do whatever it takes to help someone, right? If you can't control not drinking until 10 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning before you come and see me, I'll see you at 6, I'll see you at 5. Mm. Let's get you sober and then let me help you. So whatever it takes, but you've got to be strong. You've got to be absolutely, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to help you. Let's get on with it. Wow. Wow, so much, man, so much. I'm trying to think of... I've got to say something. Yeah, go on, now. mate. Because I, I, there was a lot of people on my TikTok who, who watched the podcast and said to me, I love the podcast. And these were, these were ladies, females. And they said, I watch the podcast, but it's all towards lads. Uh, don't, uh, what about women? Do you ever help women? I said, of course I help women. Mm. You know, I would say that 80% of my clients are male, but 20% of my clients are female. And it's funny because I had a client only last week and she says to me, I've been using for the last 10 years. She said... I take my son to school, drop him at school at 9 a.m., I pick up, I go home, I do a few lines throughout the day, I do about a point four. Before I pick him up, I pick him up at three o'clock, go home, make him dinner, try and eat something, and then I do it till about 10 o'clock at night. Okay. And that's a lady, right? And I said, of course I help ladies, of course, but it's more, I don't know whether with, with the, in the, the, the world it's more acceptable or perceived that men use it, but women use it equally. Mm. You know, I see quite a lot of women. I think that that may be I'm getting I'm getting a lot of that on my posts uh, about drinking and drugs and you know what about the women what about the women and unfortunately I'm not media trained so I don't I don't I don't vocalize I'm not like a politician so I don't I don't calculate what I'm saying to to hit multiple genres and demographics and sexes and stuff like that. I just say I just talk from yeah, my own course. experience so it can come across uh, like I'm just talking about men and and I probably do just say like men this and lads, lads this and yeah. stuff I probably do but in I'm talking about people obviously I yeah, respect my, my followings mixed it's probably majority men but there'll be there'll be women watching but um that's that's a very good point and I just think the triggers may be a different for women I think I think that the women may not go well the majority of women that I see I can only speak from my own experience from my own clients I think the majority of those women don't go to a pub have a few drinks and end up in the toilet with the rest of the boys racking it up mm. I think they do it more discreetly you know mm. they go and do one in the toilet on their own or they don't be in that environment and they do it at home or they do it in the evening or they do it with some mm. wine or do it on the weekends I don't think there is stereotypical party animals of course there are women who are yeah. and when I used to party back in the day my mate's missus she used to be with us and she was hardcore I couldn't even keep up with her and I'm Pablo Escobar <laughs> right Right, you're probably hypnotising people to give you, to give you their gear, wouldn't you? That's what I would have been doing. Look into my eyes, look into my eyes. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, and this is, this is from my perspective, um, this, is, this is something that I personally want to ask. If I was, so i uh, given you a, a big one of my triggers, so this is a big one of my triggers. Um, you know, I haven't seen the lads in ages. Yeah. So I'll be out, I'll go down to the pub, everyone will be talking, good vibes will be going, a few beers will be going, and someone goes, should we get one in? Right, or should we get one? Or who's making the call? That's the normal one. Who's making the call? Now, for anyone that's out there that 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 is going to continue drinking but wants to stop using um, and is going to continue to be in those environments and wants to be around that table, when someone says, uh, "You know, should we get one in?" How do they stop themselves taking part? Because okay. I could not even be in that situation. I, and I think I think firstly, as we said, it's a new pattern. It's a new behaviour for you, right? And that pattern takes time to become your full identity. So I think firstly, having a duration of time that you're not in that environment is very important. I would say at least three to six months of not being in that environment, right? Yeah. That's the first thing. The second thing to remember is this. Listen, alcohol blunts your choices and your rational choices and your sensible choices. And if you go there and you drink one pint, two pints max, you are more likely to make a rational choice and then chip off and leave. You've seen your mates, go for a couple of hours and go, right? Mm. But if you're going to be there and you're going to be there all night, by the time you're four, five, six pints in, it doesn't matter what you're thinking. The potential of using is elevated massively, right? Mm. That's the second thing. And the third thing is, I don't know if I can stand, can I get the height to stand up here? Yeah, yeah, go on, yeah. mate. Yeah, so, yeah. so this is something that everybody can learn back home, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll show you, right? Very simple technique, right? So if you imagine here, this is the person that, He's, in the, he's, he's gonna go to the pub with his mates, right? But here, they're in that environment when their mates are offering them and they don't wanna accept it. And then they step forward, one step, and they close their eyes and imagine what they would already feel like if they're already telling their friends, no, I don't want it. And if they really believe that and really feel it themselves. And then they turn around and they look back at their old self 
and they see the difference of the changes that they felt and the experience they had. So what you're doing is you're taking your future as it's already happened and then you're stepping into it so you're emotionally experiencing those feelings. So you're psychologically attached to what you want and that builds strength. Mm. It's what I call immunization, right? So, so for example, if you were going to go on holiday to a foreign country where you had to have uh, an immunization, an, an injection, what they're actually giving you is they're giving you a little bit of that illness to build your own immune system to defend that immune system. So if you have an immunization, if you have a thing that you're already going to say ahead of it, you're ahead of the game. So if they offer you and you already know what you're going to say, mm. you're preventing it happening. So you've got to immunize yourself mm. against every situation, every possibility, both mentally and physically. Wow. So, so I guess what you're saying is, look, if you're going to take this seriously and you're going to do it, you got. In my, uh, the only way that I could compare this to my own life experiences is when I've got a stand-up show, I might prepare. Um, I might prepare some comebacks for people that heckle. Exactly. So preparing heckle comebacks. That's what you're doing. You're preparing your mind in advance for what might be. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, yeah, so I'm just trying to think from, I'm trying to ask you questions now from my own experience. And um, someone, someone that, I guess what, I'm just, what I want to ask is, so for me, it was very difficult because I've kind of felt like, you know, what's next? I think a lot of people will think, what's next? So do you ever have people come and sit in front of you and they go, well, I have nothing else. It's the only thing I've got. It's yeah, the, abso it absolutely. And I think and I think that is, uh, uh, especially with my younger clientele. So I would say 25 to 30, 35. That, if we look at that age bracket, they're like, you know, but I'm bored. I'm mm. bored. What am I going to do? You know, there's only so much Netflix you can watch, right? Yeah. There's only so much TV you can watch. And I think mm. that's simply because they've spent the last five, seven, ten years of their life doing this thing. Mm. And it goes right back to what we said. It's creating a new pattern, a new lifestyle. Think about this concept, right? Somebody who wants to lose weight, they mm. go on a diet for a period of time. Mm. Isn't it better to have a lifestyle change yeah. where they change the eating, where they can mm. have longevity? And that's what you're doing. Mm. You're making a lifestyle yeah, change. Yeah. You're not going on a diet where you can't yeah. have it. You're making a lifestyle change. That's my that's my mentality right now. My mentality right now is I'm not giving anything up. I'm not I'm not I'm not giving anything up. I'm not my mentality is I'm not giving anything up. I'm not missing out. Um, I'm changing my lifestyle. John, oh. you forgot to flick the camera onto me there, mate. My my mentality is I'm <laughs> you're not very you're listening too much. That's how you know it's yeah. a good podcast. Yeah. Um but no, um just 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 on that. So uh from my experience, just to anyone else out there that's doing it, I I, I you've got to accept your whole life is gonna change. Like you said, so your lifestyle. identity is your gonna identity change. change. You're making a new lifestyle for yourself. And let me just pick up on something you just said there, Dan, because it's very interesting. You said I'm not giving up anything. And, and that's a really, really powerful word because people go, oh, I'm going I'm to give up using the gear. No, if you feel you're giving up something, and I said this on the last podcast, you feel deprived. And human nature is anytime you feel deprivation, you want that something more. It doesn't matter what it is. You're not giving up. You're wow. making a lifestyle change. Use the diet analogy. You're not going on a diet. You're changing your lifestyle and you're eating healthily. Mm. That's exactly the same with the gear. Yeah, because you you 100%, I know that I 100% associated uh, to the point where I thought, I 100% associated the 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 only real fun in my life was uh, drinking and partying. The only real fun I was having was at the end of the week was drinking and partying. And my missus always used to say to me, my wife used to say, you got your fucking priorities wrong. And I, I know us lads always hear this. You got your fucking priorities wrong. It never sinks in. Because I used to think my only happiness, the only time I really get to enjoy myself is at the weekend when I'm partying, drinking and having a session or whatever. Now, after I'm free from it, not I've given it up, Yep, I'm, that's I'm it. Using there that you word. go. There yeah. you go. Love now, it. Now that I'm free from it, my God, my happiness. Because one, I don't have any guilt or shame, and I feel so happy. You're alive. I'm alive. My happiness is uh, feeling good, feeling fit, looking sexy, um, playing with my kids, having having nice calm evenings and stuff like that. And I think, look, I had a good run. I had a good run. So. Um, you know, give yourself the chance to get into the lifestyle Absolutely. before you before you tell yourself that you don't want it. I think a lot of people have this this mentality that, yeah, but I've worked hard all week. I've grafted Definitely. all week. And it's Friday. I don't work the weekend. It's Friday. Why shouldn't I do something like this? And listen, 
as I said before, I'm not here to preach to you. If you want to do mm. that, go ahead and do that. But if you've reached a decision where you realize that this isn't productive in your yeah. life anymore, then you've got to look at yourself. You've got to take a hard look at yourself and go, really, yeah. it's time to do something about it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Just want, to, just want to emphasize that point for you as well, because we can can sit here especially me only 100 days in we can sit here sometimes and come across like we're going right don't drink don't because there's a few of my mates <coughs> out there that can drink and have the occasional line and do you know what they might feel hung over the next day it doesn't affect their lives yeah. that's fine and more power to you I'm, I'm... I, I said that to you on the last podcast that's with me with alcohol right like if i have two pints of cider in a year actually i don't think i even had a drink last year if i have two pints of cider in a year that's a lot mm. for me i can take it i can leave it but if somebody has an issue with alcohol mm. they can't do that I'm like that mm. with the packet. Mm. I can't take it or leave it. And somebody says to me, I have clients say to me, L, couldn't I just use like once every three months? Wouldn't that be good? And I go, hmm, if I could use every once every three months, don't you think I'd be probably doing that? But the point is I can't use once every three months because I've had an addiction. I've had a propensity to want to use that drug. And if you've had that addiction, you can't go back to being an occasional user. Maybe the first time you use it, you don't use it for a few weeks, maybe a month, maybe three months. But eventually, sooner or later, mm. you're going to end up right back where you were. Yeah, 100 percent. I know that from I know that from personal experience. And um, I went, I'll tell you something quite interesting. I, yesterday I went to meet another trigger. This was another trigger for me. Whenever I go, I had a couple of meetings in town. I had a, a podcast here then with Kirk, which we was a deep one. And then I had a couple of meetings. He's up. very deep, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he, he, he opened up some old wounds and everything like that. And But he's great fun. We have we have a really good laugh as well. We, we managed to come from the jokes to, into the sense. He, he sent me a photo just after the podcast mm. was set out of, of his TV on the lounge and he's, he, of, of us on the podcast. Yeah. He sent a picture of it from his lounge, sent it to me on WhatsApp. Yeah, nice he's a guy. legend. He really yeah. is a legend. But I, afterwards, I went into central London and this was a massive... Ch and I'm starting to notice my triggers now. I That's really, important. I really, part. yeah, <clears throat> I'm starting to really notice my triggers. You're because... <clears throat> you know what you're doing? Without <clears throat> even realising, Dan, <clears throat> you are creating an inoculation of knowing where the problems are and foreseeing them before that event. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah, yeah. And I it, put it this way. If I was ever getting off the train at Leicester Square, if I was ever going into central London, Leicester Square, Soho, there's, uh, if I was ever going up there, I would, I would already have said to the missus, like in my meeting might be at like three, four o'clock, but I already would have said to the missus, uh, I'm out this evening, you know, we've got, I've got dinner after or it's going on late because I used to know and I used to look forward to it. I'll get off the train at Leicester Square and I'll be like, it's fucking going off yes. tonight. And I'd have it in my head. I'd be like, right. Let's have let's it. Let's have it. And uh, <clears throat> I got off at Leicester Square yesterday. And um, also my old agent, I used to have a good drink up with my old agent. And I went and sat down with him. And he was like, you're right. And uh, I was like, yeah. And he, he's talking to me about some TV shows and bits and bobs that he wants to, and he wants to work with me again. All that is a lovely conversation. And he said, um, you're right. You seem a bit anxious. I was like, yeah, I, can, I don't want to spend too much time here, mate. I can, I can feel it. You know, I can feel it in the air. I could feel it. And he was like, yeah, I get what you're saying, man. And, um, and, uh, and I said, so it's been great, but I'm going to cut, I'm going to, like cut the meeting short and get out just because bar or whatever and he said a funny thing to me he said i can also feel it and he he wasn't like me right but he said being around you yes made me yes. triggered yes. triggered him yeah and you he, were his trigger i was his trigger because yeah. every time i'd see him we'd be that's uh, it we'd either he'd either be giving me work yep. or we'd be celebrating the yes. work we'd done of course so um so i thought oh fucking hell so what i'm triggering you and he was like yeah but he's he, he's not he's not intentionally sober he's just because he's working hard he's not he hasn't been drinking but he said i can feel it too like we would normally be going wild right now wouldn't we and i was like yeah so it's mad i wonder how many people out there i've triggered oh, def yeah definitely and vice versa mm. um i wanted to touch on one thing dan um because I think the when people talk about the occupation, there is no stereotypical user mm. of a particular occupation. I don't think it matters whether you are a plasterer, a plumber, a electrician, a laborer, an office worker, a mechanic, yeah. a CEO of a company. Oh, you told me this before. Yeah, I told you before. Did, did I tell you about the guy that has a chauffeur pick him up and take him into no. the city? Oh, let me tell you this. I had a client of mine. He says to me, "El, I have a chauffeur pick. This guy is very, very well known. Massive corporation that he runs. Big CEO, like serious, serious, well-known person. And let me make this one thing clear because somebody asked me this question. Everyone I deal with 
I'm 100% confidentiality. I don't discuss it with anyone. It doesn't matter. Listen, you should see my Rolodex. Well, blacklist. Yeah. iPod, whatever. Anyway. But, 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 I mean, you'll give us the story, but you won't give us the name. Absolutely. I'll give you the story because you're not going to put two and what two together. What about after the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, go um, on. So, so he says to me, um, <laughs> yeah. so he says to me, Oh, I have my chauffeur picks me up. He drives me into the city of London every day where he works. And on the way at 7.30 in the morning, my driver stops off and I pick up three tickets. Right. I was like, okay. Like you'd never imagine you're looking at this guy and, and he's very well known. Pulls up in a Rolls Royce. Right? You know, the chauffeur drives a Rolls Royce, drives me into the city. Alan of Sugar. I <laughs> Alan, it's not you, buddy. Um, <laughs> yet. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so he says, yeah. and I get to my office, and I start using it at about nine o'clock, and I stop using it at four, right? Whatever I've got left over, I put in the drawer. I always buy three. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they, they stack up. And, and I stop using it at four because my driver picks me up at six and drives me back home, and my missus doesn't know. What? How His missus doesn't, doesn't know. know. So he stops at four to try and level himself off, have a few whiskeys before he leaves the office, and he has board meetings, like with 30, 40 directors of a multinational company, and people would never even know. How does he do that? Because fucking I'd have one, two, and I'd be fucking talking about aliens or yeah. fucking, yeah. I'll be creating like because, some... Because right now, at this present time, he's still a functioning addict. And that happens. Some people are functioning addicts initially. I was for many, many years until you reach a point where you're not. But for him, he was a function at it and he got things done and nobody knew. And you'd look at this guy, not in a billion years would you imagine <coughs> this guy you know, was a user. So it just goes to show there is no stereotypical type yeah. of user. But it goes across the board. But don't you think that, <coughs> I'm just being a bit cynical here, but don't you think that potentially, I mean, was he a multimillionaire? Yes. So don't you think potentially that he made a lot of money because of the coke? Possible, possible. Mm. I mean, the first book I wrote the very first book I wrote. You was off the, your nut. Which is a PDF, right? This is what happened. People said to me, I'll tell you the story. People said to me, Elle, you should write a book. And I was like, I can't write a fucking book. You know, I, I, I'm dyslexic. You know, I'm educated, but I'm dyslexic. And they said, no, no, you can write a book. You can get a, a proofreader. I was like, oh, proofreader. I hadn't thought about that. So uh, funny. I hired a private investigator because at my 15th birthday, my English teacher wrote, he will never amount to anything using the English language. So I hired a private investigator and I wrote this book. And the first book that I printed and was published, right, the private investigator tracked down this person's address and I signed it, fuck you, and sent the book. Did you actually? I, I swear to God. Mate, that's fucking, that's some strong gear you was on that day. So that, I, that's some the strong book, fucking, fuck you. You wrote that, you got it, mate, you're off your nut. You're off your nut. I'm just imagining you're off your nut. You wrote a book and right at the end you're like, another line, you're like, my English school teacher. I've yeah. got to find him. That's but it. That's fucking... Fuck you. Did you anyway, really do that? Yeah, I really did that. So I wrote the book. I didn't write the book for my <laughs> night. I wrote this book and every night I'd be like <laughs> off my tits, right? And I'd be writing at three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning thinking when I wake up in the morning, everything I've written in my notes is going to be a load of shit. And I wake up every day and I was like, wow, this is great. And within three months, I wrote my first book, right? I wrote my first book. And as I said, I hired a private investigator, tracked down my old English teacher's, uh, teacher's address, photocopy the school report signed it fuck you I never heard back I wasn't interested but it got it off my chest it he kind of grade it for you, really. he didn't grade no, it imagine if he graded it, it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so he sent back F, F minus fuck you <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and, and that's a true story so at that point I was psychologically functioning I wrote a book you know mm. 300 page book so we're not talking about oh a little five page a 300 page book that I wrote while I was completely off my tits because back then I was functioning Later on, my usage got to a point where couldn't even get my words out. How am I going to write a fucking book? Yeah, wow. I mean, yeah, I never, I never had to work when I was away. I was always like, do you know what I mean? It was party time for me, so I, I was never working. But I couldn't imagine anything worse than going on stage sniffed up, mate. I'd fucking end up shot. I think they put me in front of a firing line. But that's really interesting. That's crazy. Did he get off? The, yeah, he yeah? got off. He got off completely. How did you, how did you get him off? So I use, I use the four strategies. I use four sessions. The first session I do with every client, I do what's called a case history. In that session, I get to understand their usage, their environment, their triggers, when they do it, how they do it. There's an interesting thing about people who are using. Let's take a point four as an example, right? Mm. So the average user of a point four will make four lines. That's a point a line. So that tells me if they make two lines, the quantity they use. That tells me if they make eight lines, the quantity they use. The average user will do a line half an hour apart. So I already know that a point four, they're going to be using over two hours. So what I do is I work out their ratio of usage, the size of their lines by telling me how many lines they get out of it, and then their, their values, their beliefs, everything about their life, and I create 
I don't use a cookie cutter model. I make everything specific to that person. And I create the whole three sessions using hypnosis, psychological evaluation, so, linguistics to do that. Just to pause yeah. you quickly, just to pause you. So you do you do the math or you do the math on the usage, how often they're using. Yes. So so for instance, I guess that gives you an indication of the size of the problem. Correct. Okay, so so the frequency of use, how many are often they use. Yeah, okay. So the size of the problem. Now tell me, go back to and then and then you said what their filters or their no, what did you so, say? So, their so their lifestyle. Their lifestyle, so their beliefs. That's what I wanted to focus on. What so, do you okay. mean? Okay, so so okay, so our brain is split into two halves. We have conscious, that's everything we're aware of right now, and then we have unconscious or subconscious, I like the word unconscious, which is everything that goes on beneath our awareness, right? right. Our unconscious is formed from everything you learn from the day you're born, your upbringing, your education, your occupation, your values, what's important to you. So like before you had kids, that was an important value to you, then your values, and then your beliefs. There are two types of belief. There is what's called a proven belief. So the world is round, right? And somebody comes along and goes, well, no, it's not. And they try to disprove it, but come up with the same answer. That becomes a proven belief. So we know is factually true. Mm. Then we have personal beliefs. That is something that may be personally- Like an opinion? An opinion, a religion, a faith. Right. So that's a personal belief. Something that may be true to them, but may not be true to somebody else. So I take their personal beliefs, those things that, that both they believe that they're able to achieve and their limiting beliefs, the things they don't think they can achieve, right? So there are all different types of beliefs within that. So I take what they believe and then all their experiences, all of that, which is what computes in the blink of an eye for you to make a decision to do, to not do, to like or to dislike comes from here. So for example, if you didn't like apples, right? And I said to you, Dan, I've got a beautiful apple for you. And you're like, no, 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 I don't want that apple. You're not making that decision that you don't like that apple based upon today. You're making that decision that you didn't like the apple based upon your past experiences, mm. which are filtered through everything that you've ever gone through, right? right. What your mum said to you, so that, that value, that belief of what you thought back then, and your belief today is based upon that past experience. You're not making that decision based on today. So you go back to that point Correct. in time, you chat, you make them realize that, that that's not set in stone, that that can be changed, and then it will change the perception of the apple. Exactly, exactly what I do. Exactly Fucking what I do in a hell. nutshell. You know, and people have a misconception about hypnosis, and let me explain this. People have a misconception about hypnosis because they think to be hypnotized, you've got, you've got to be under or out of it, or that's not true. You're hypnotized many times in your life, but you're giving it different names. I'll give you an example. We'll call that influence, right? Or hypnosis, influence, whatever word you want to use. You go to the supermarket, do you know what the two most commonest items purchased in the supermarket are? Toilet roll? No. No? Um, eggs and milk. Bread and milk, right? Now, I promise you, if you go to a supermarket, bread and milk will not be at the entrance. It will be in the furthest part away from where the entrance is. Why is that? So you see stuff you want to buy before you, you get to You through the store and you are influenced or hypnotized to purchase things you did not intend to mm. buy. Mm. Listen, you go and buy a certain T-shirt or pair of trainers. You're likely to buy that brand which influenced you to make that decision, whether it be Nike or Adidas or whether it be, yeah. you know, and the car you buy. That car fits your values of what you think that brand is. Mm. So if you want a car that was reliable for your family, you buy a certain brand. If you want something a bit sporty because that looks hip, mm. you buy a certain brand. We're influenced every day or hypnotized every day. We don't make our conscious decisions. Our decisions are made for us formed from our unconscious belief system mm. that is being filtered the whole time. So I change that for them, which changes that here. Having an understanding of that, can you see how we're manipulated by the media and politicians? We're, we're definitely manipulated. Listen, every decision we make today is, is formed from things that we see. Or we hear. Why do you think, let's use Adidas, why do you think a bus will have an Adidas advert on the side of it? Not because you're going to run out today and go, I've got to buy those trainers. But the next time you are in a store and you are thinking about buying those trainers. You're drawn back to the brand. Yes, unconsciously it's embedded in your mind that's why they do it they don't spend millions mm. of pounds doing that making tv mm. commercials without it having mm. a response they do it because you're drawn mm. as you say you're influenced yeah so i always think of it as in, i always look at it as in like my mind's eye what i see in my mind's eye and um when i went away for a bit i had um prison no, 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 it wasn't prison. I remember I put, I put that story up, you know, and fucking, I put that story up saying I chat some shit. Yeah, I told yeah, someone yeah. once I was in prison. Yeah, I remember. And someone just wrote in there, I've done some gear, but I ain't never fucking said that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right. But, um, they sent it from prison. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you know what the funny thing is? Our podcast, actually, I got contacted by the prison service and they asked if they can use our podcast in the prison service to show to inmates. Do you know what? No I'm, money. We don't get no I'm, money I'm for gonna, it. I'm, I asked for a bit of dough, but they just said I'm going to no. tell you something, right? <clears throat> I, I'm not going to use the names right but yeah. um 
I used to train at a gym in St Albans. That's as much as I'm going to give away. And the guy that used to run it was a lovely guy. And then he got into using the gear. And it really, really took control of his life. I'd go in at <coughs> 6 o'clock in the morning to train and like a full-length mirror in the gym that was broken, he'd have lying down like this and he would rack up a line, like a massive fucking line, right, and do it. Anyway, it affected him so much that later on in life, this guy ended up chopping up bodies and throwing them out of his car window on the motorway while doing gear, a leg, an arm. I'm not going to tell you the name of the murder. He's in Belmarsh serving 35 oh, years. Fuck, that's some strong gear. And that, yeah, that is how it happened to affect him. So I'm not saying that affects everyone because, of course, they're not going out and all being mass murderers. But I'm saying the propensity of how it can affect you and your emotions at mm. that moment in time and all the other things that are going on can have a massive impact on you. Yeah. Yeah, man. Crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. Uh, I f I th yeah, we've got to wrap up soon. But I think I think that that's such an important that's such an important analogy to look at, because although and I know I keep sort of reaffirming my someone just put a comment on their beautiful hooter for, for beautiful hooter for the bugle now I don't know if that's me or you uh, do you know what I get it all the time it Go is on. on our podcast as there well there you go I wouldn't want to share a line with that geezer yeah. the size of his nose yeah. <laughs> you're right you wouldn't get an opportunity because I don't do it anymore and back in the day you wouldn't be able to stay near me friend <laughs> but um, I think this is oh, it's been great talking to you again God, we get so much information out on this I think we're going to have to do another one come back at 200 days yeah, 200 just days just for the cakes 200 days <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll bring you different cakes, different ones. But um, I think, uh, well, thank you first of all. And uh, it, do you have, do you, uh, what I would love to finish this episode oh, on? Oh, something I want to ask you before. Oh, go know. on then, go on, you go first. Uh, listen, the, most of my TikToks at the end of it, I finish out with a sentence. And my, my little, what, what's it called, tagline, is that what you're saying? Yeah. What's that about? I've got yeah. to get one together. I've got to have one together. We'll do one, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, yes, come yeah. on, ready? After three. One, two, three. What's, what's that, that about? about? I'll tell you what, I'll do, I'll, I'll do the first bit. Yeah. And then and then we're both, because I'll, I'll, I know how you, I see your TikToks, yeah. Yeah. Can you video Go, this? Can yeah, you put this up? Yeah, look, we're going to create some real-time content for you right now, guys. This is how you do. Go, <clears throat> when you have a little bit of the, what do you call it? You say the packet, didn't you? Yeah, the, the packet. packet yeah. The packet. He goes like this. I'm, I'm going to get <laughs> right into it. So when you have a little bit of the packet, how come your penis shrinks so much you can't use it? It's like a bald man poking his head out of a bush. It's like playing snooker with a piece of rope. I'm telling you, it's tiny. What's that, that about? about? <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? I love that. Thank you. Catchphrases are key. Mine was proper moist. Do you remember that, John? Proper moist. <laughs> proper or, voice. Yeah, she knows. I used to go... Actually, I won't go into that because we might, <laughs> we might have new viewers on that have seen that have discovered me. Don't Google me uh, from back in the day. Um, I'll tell you what I want to finish on. I, I want to finish on... And I'm putting you on the spot here, but I yes, want to, I want to finish it. on this. Can you give a small technique to people uh, that they can use when they are feeling triggered? Or, oh, on the spot. Yeah. Triggered, okay. Um, when, like, and by triggered, what I mean is, is like today, it's Thursday, it's Friday, sorry, like today when it's coming close to the weekend, something they can, uh, an exercise maybe they can do in their okay. mind. So, so, so listen, let's go back to values that we spoke about, right? Yeah. Let, first of all, I would say take a piece of pen and a paper. I know this sounds laborious and boring, but it's trust me and make five points of the values that are important to you of why you don't use, right? Your kids, your partner, money, whatever those fives are, but they have to be really emotional, they have to be really powerful for you, almost like you go, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. Now you've got to keep saying those things over and over in your mind, you've got to remind yourself, and then what you do is you create an image on a library, right? So, so on, sorry, on a cinema. So you've got a cinema screen, and on that cinema screen, you make it very large, you make all that feeling that you feel, the negative emotions when you use, and the bottom right corner, all those values of you not wanting to use and how good you feel. And then what you do is you count from one to three, and you take the small picture in the bottom right corner, bigger and bigger until it takes up the whole picture of how you now want to be. And then you repeat that process over and over and over again. And you're retraining your brain, you're rewiring your brain to the new picture. Then, and this is very important, you have to emotionally attach that picture. So it's like, if you go and buy a new pair of jeans and you try them on, and what that feels like when you've got them on, so you're emotionally attaching, right? Then you step into that image of how you want to be and you feel it, what it feels like, how good you feel, how pleased mm. yourself, how happy yourself, how confident you feel mm. not using. And you keep replaying that over mm. and over in your mind and you will reaffirm those feelings. Wow. Well, there you go. Please use these techniques as displayed here by... 
TikTok famous, Instagram famous, and all round great guy, Elliot Ward, the hit, the, the, the packet you, hypnotist, we're going to say. Hypnotist. And you know what? I, I don't think this is the last time you're going to see him. Uh, but where can they follow you, mate? Just chuck that out there so for us. So my TikTok is at hypnosis underscore expert. They can follow me on TikTok. My Instagram, everything's hypnosis expert because I like to keep things all across the board. Or you can go to my personal Facebook page, put my name in, which if you don't know now, I'm not telling you. <laughs> well, all right, thank you very much. And thank you for coming back. Thank you for the cakes. I'm going to try and, try and get these all the way home. Yes, to, um, yeah, well, we had to carry them this, all of the train yeah. as well. I've got a bag for you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I hope it's just a carrier bag. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be better. This is not what I'd normally be taking <laughs> home with me from London on a Friday, let me tell you that. But um, I just want to finish up by saying thank you very much for everyone that's watching. Please share this with anyone you think any of this information uh, will help. Uh, like me and Elliot kept saying, we're not here to preach. We're just trying to help. Um, leave us a comment. Uh, we read all the comments. Yeah, and definitely. We're trying. We're trying. Interact a lot. Yeah, right? we're trying to interact. Go give them a follow. Um, and yeah, let us know who else you'd like to see on here from from a podcast perspective. Um, subscribe, follow, and thank you. Be happy. And uh, hey. Uh, Minister Sabroy, what's like, that all what's about? That about? No, go on. <laughs> what's that about? Thank you. <laughs> If you're going through a tough time at the moment, please don't suffer in silence. Feel free to pick up the phone and contact any of these helplines. I personally, myself, at one of my darkest points, contacted the Samaritans and it completely changed my outlook and got me out of a really deep, dark place. A problem shared really is a problem halved. So if you don't feel confident talking to those around you, check out any of these organizations and give them a call. This is my Facebook group. Just simply search on Facebook, Men and Their Emotions. It's for men only, uh, but once you're in there, you can talk anonymously about your problems and help others and just feel a little bit of community. So come join the conversation, Men and Their Emotions, on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Menace of sobriety. Just a menace. Just, just a menace. Just a menace. Menace of sobriety. Just a menace. Just, just a menace. Menace of sobriety.